Um, here, let's start uh, the, the look at the content of chapter 6. The chapter 6 is about the another loading type. Uh, we call it shear, uh, the transverse loading. And the transverse loading will induce the shin stress in the beams. Okay. So, and also, in this chapter, we're going to also look at the thin wall, uh, the shin stress in thin wall members. Um, so here is we have four sections in total in uh, this lecture slides. Um, so let's start with the the first section here. <coughs> the first section we will general generally uh, introduce the concepts of the shin stress in the beams, and in particular here you can see in this drawing here showing is it will happen in the beam under the, for example, in terms of AB, the bending at the A and B are not equal. So under these situations, for example, bending at A is not big, bending at B is that small. So under these situations, the, uh, the shin stress will occur. Okay, and this is different from what we learned from chapter 4. In chapter four, uh, there we know the at the two end of the beam, the bending is equal in magnitude, but not in this case anymore. Um, so we continue to look at from the schematic, the conceptual, um, the understanding of the bending uh, with the moment unequal. Okay, so here we consider the cantilever beam, and then on the point loading, so we can draw the shear and bending moment diagram like shown here. And for this case, the the beam is going to curve down, so the bending will all uh, negative. And and from here, if I pick the section A and section B, so from here you can see the the moment. At A uh, here is that big, so I think that is MA, so must be going down like this. And at B here, the moment is MB, that direction should be like this one. Okay, so from here, you can see in terms of the magnitude, the MA, in terms of the magnitude, MA, let me put the absolute value, is greater than MB. Okay. So that is the situation we're going to look for. And then from here, uh, again, in our chapter four, what we have learned is about the pure bending. So that means the bending moment applied at the two ends, they are equal in magnitude, but here is not, okay? So that is the difference from what we learned before. And keep this in mind, and then I will move on. <coughs> Uh, this slide basically showing is the very concise summaries of what we're going to go over in these sections. And that is the contents from our textbook. But uh, we can, it's worth to look at this uh, information first, and then I will go uh, to detailed uh, every single step we describe here. So we consider the front view, this is a part of the beams, and on the top is under a very general uh, the distributed loading here. Okay, so something joined like this one here. So if here we take the free body diagram of only this portion here. Okay, so just showing like here. here. So we take the free body diagram here. You can see here. I want to emphasize here we expose the sections here. One, two, and three. So in total, we have one, two, and three sections being exposed by choosing uh, by choosing this such a cross section here. So on this side, this cross section here, we know that is under the the bending. Again, on this side is under bending, the bending stress, and multiply with dA that is small force. Okay, and we take the small force integral, integrate the small force over this cross section, we will get the force. We take this uh, bending stress integral, we will take, we'll get the force, and the two forces must be in balance with this force. This force is reaction at the bottom side here, they call the delta edge. So in here, we have this kind, this kind, and this kind, and all the three types of the forces are in the x direction. So we take the equilibrium, so the three things together must be equal, 
okay so then again the bending stress bending stress we multiply uh, introduce our bending m y over i okay so that is a formula we introduce here and m is simply the bending at c side or at the d side we put into this formula okay so in this way we are able to determine the delta edge here and again delta edge is a reaction here and from this formula in general this formula is not equal to zero so which means in general data edge is not equal to zero so before we proceed you should be able to see so in terms of the cross section here what we pick uh, this corresponding to this section let me change color again so here we pick this section at the here or uh, from the side view corresponding to here and that's showing up here in terms of the three dimensional basically is showing here uh, here i showing in uh, um, kind of pink okay so that is the area we've been looking at and in which the data edge is not equal to zero so from here you can see data edge is parallel to the cross section so data edge divided by whatever the area here Okay, so that gives us is a concept of the average, average, uh, the average string stress here. Okay, so basically that is the term, uh, that is the focus of this chapter. Basically, this figure with this calculation tell us everything. That is the terms we're going to calculate to learn in this stress, string stress here. Okay and then uh, the remaining contents remaining uh, the chapters is uh, the calculation of this exercise okay the first thing let us see how can we implement the calculation of data edge here that involve this one okay involve this integral and also involve md minus mc okay so MD minus MC, and here we can further uh, introduce the what we learned from shear bending moment diagram. And MD MC basically data M that can be related to V times data X. Okay, so that is from our contents in chapter five there. So introduce the MD M minus uh, this term with this one here. Okay, V data x okay and then uh, for this term this integral uh, in this chapters in all the textbook and mechanics material we define this integral as a q so q come to here okay and then the last one is uh, i okay so i is a moment of initial respect to the neutral axis that is a term we've been exercised a lot in in chapter four and that i go to here so by implementing the three things, then you can see involving determine the MD, the V times theta X, and we involving this integral, also involve a kind of time consuming calculation of I, and that is where we get the data edge done. So by doing so, if uh, for a typical province, uh, the data edge usually will take a longer time and to implement, okay, but that is the way here. So here, uh, with data edge being in place, then um, the uh, we first one we introduce tau. Okay, so data edge basically is equal to. Let me change the color again. Uh, color. So basically, data edge. Let me copy here. Data edge equal to VQ divided by I times X. Okay, so that's the data edge. And now we we'll look at what is A here. Okay. So A uh, here in our notations, and here let me say the width is T here, and that T basically is the dimension here, okay? And what is data X in terms of our notation? This is the data X here, and that is the segment we pick. So basically in terms of the drawing here, this is data X, okay? So in this way, the area A simply equal to data X times T. Okay, so by looking at this 3D, three-dimensional view, so data A equal to data X times T. 
So if, from here, you can simplify tau equal to VQ over IT. Okay. And then uh, we introduce uh, a very special terminology called the shear flow. The shear flow simply is the unit is the data is the the we call the data edge is called the shear force. Okay, we call this is called the shear force. So shear flow simply is a shear force per unit length. So for example, the whole total shear force in this strip, in this pink strip, is data edge. So data edge divided by data x that is a unit. Uh, that is the shear force per unit length. Okay, so this one is defined by Q, and this one we define as the shear flow. Okay, and again, uh, we introduce data H and our calculation here, uh, VQ over I times X, and divide by X here, then shear flow equal to VQ over I. Okay, so that is the two and the only two uh, important equations in this chapter here. And again, this slide gives us a very uh, broad and very high level uh, level uh, the summaries of what we have done. And again, uh, you can rewind the video and to re-understand and re-listen to the contents here. And in the following, I'm going to detail uh, individual uh, terms in calculations and try to reinforce the individual concepts. In particular, I will let you know how to determine k, uh, how to determine q. Q is such a special integral, the area integral uh, over certain uh, cross section, the cross section on the uh, on the own. Is okay. The Q is the area integral of Y uh, on a certain portion of the cross section, and that one we're going to exercise quite a bit. Okay. So here I'm going to start from uh, again. Here my purpose is to reinforce the very important concepts uh, for these chapters, and in the following remaining uh, remaining contents of this uh, section. Uh, everything will be more qualitative, so hopefully to reinforce your concept in learning. And then starting from the next section, we'll have more kind of quantitative uh, calculations, uh, examples, etc. Okay, so uh, we recall, uh, say here we consider a very general loading of the bending here. I take the cantilever beam under the point loading. And for interest, for my interest, I only want to take the free bar diagram of this portion just highlight here, okay? And then I simply uh, zoom out that section here. So basically, uh, here, let me be clear, okay? So basically, these portions is highlight here, this portion, okay? Okay, so now uh, here we can draw the bending moment diagrams, and so from here this one is the shear, and x this is v. So by uh, this is the reaction loading equal to f. So basically here let me put the drawing here first. Okay. So for this is the shear diagram, this is zero, and this is minus f per our sign convention here. And this is zero, and then here for uh, joint, so this is our bending, okay? So bending the maximum is uh, minus f times l here, this value, and the slope equal to, uh, oh, uh, so here I think uh, upside down. So let me rewind my joint here. Okay, so the bending should be, um, let me see, yes, so the bending should be like this. Okay, so sorry. So this is a strain line. The, uh, the slope equal to minus f, the maximum here, the m equal to f times l, okay? So for this case here, at this position, this is a bending, I call the m1 here, and at this positions, and the magnitude of bending code M2. 
So from here, very apparently, M1 is greater than M2. That is the point I want to see. Okay. So here on this side, and this side here, and the bending is M2. And from here, we from the chapter four, we know the bending stress is like this. Okay, and the distribution is like this. And this is the neutral surface. On the top is in compression, and this is in tension. And in a similar way, on this side, because M1 is bigger, so the bending stress is relatively is bigger than the other side. So that is the same pattern like this way here. And now uh, I want to, in particular, I want to simply pick up uh, small portions uh, as the free bar diagram to study what is the shin stress at this layer. Okay, my purpose is I want to find out what is the shin stress, shin force at this level here. Okay, so I pick up this one. And that location, and again, uh, this location from here, this is a Y1, and here is Y2 on the top. Okay, so I redraw the diagram here, the, the free bar diagram here. And then corresponding to the selection of this particular small, smaller uh, free bar diagrams, then I uh, redraw, and uh, not redraw, I copy the corresponding depending stress course, uh, that distributed in the selected cross section uh, free bar diagram here. Okay, something like this one. So uh, this we are able to determine the total force, the simply the total force acting on this side, on this side, if you want to see the three dimensions, it's three dimensions should be something like this, okay? So this is a total force acting on this surface and simply is the area integral of the stress, okay? The stress is this one here. The similar way, and this is the three dimensional, this is the total force applied on this section, on this side. And again, that is the area integral of the magnitude of the stress. And because I pick up on this side, so you can see the total force here should be, uh, on this side should be go to that direction along with the direction of the stress, similar to this side, go to that direction. And from here you can see before we implement the detailed uh, bit and then you can apparently you can see the total force F1 should be greater than F2 here. So that means here in balance we must have for example say F1 equal to say I say 10 and say for example if this is before then data H must be equal to 6. Okay, so they must have the uh, existed they must ex exist in the, the, the shear force at the bottom side. Okay, the bottom side here, let me make a color. So this is the bottom surface, okay. So at the bottom surface of this selected uh, free bar diagram, the, the data edge, the shear force. The shear force equal to six in balance. So that is a one we we try to come up with. Okay, so again, uh, I want to reinforce this concept again, again and again. The shear force exists uh, because due to the shear force exists. Okay, the shear force exists, and then that is because the F one is greater than F two. And so that means this magnitude of force is greater than this one. And why the F1 is greater than F2? Because this is the, the stress integral. This is the stress integral. The stress on this side is related to M1. The stress is related to M2. M1 greater than M2. Because M1 greater than M2, so the corresponding stress at each level is larger, this side is larger than that one, that inducing F1 is greater than F2 here, okay? So here we, uh, qualitatively, we have recognized the existence of the string stress in the beam. And so in general, the beam, the stress, the distribution of the stress on the cross section will be like this one, okay? We're going to explain this in more detail, but right now just take it. The string stress should be minimum on the top at the bottom and minimum toward the middle, okay? And um, <coughs> so if, um, 
if the say this whole beam if uh, kind of the glued by the different layers of the materials if the shin stress will be strong enough to um, overcome the bonding strains then basically you can see they will call the delamination will occur and will be something like this one so this is the evidence showing the existence of the shin stress here so here we have three basic questions we want to answer it, um, through the remaining contents of this chapter here so the first one is to how to calculate the shin stress the second one, and we are interested in knowing uh, where the maximum shin stress occurred and what is the maximum shin stress. Then the third one is uh, when does a bean have no shin stress? Okay, so that is the kind of the, the very detailed, the quantitative questions we can answer only uh, after we learned how to quantify the equations and for understanding individual terms in the equation to determine the magnitude of the shin stress here. So this page uh, is a uh, further detailed anatomy of the analysis and here this will be our last chance to think about the detailed principles, formulations, the concepts, okay. Um, again, this is the small portions and this is in terms of the whole entire cross sections and I simply pick up is I pick this level to expose uh, what is the data edge, okay. So that means here this is a side view and this is the, uh, this is a, this is a front view. And in terms of the side view here, let me pick up the T-shaped cross section for example. So again, for this section, for this um, the this bottom side corresponding to I pick. Okay, again here is I pick to expose uh, the information for uh, the determined data edge. I pick the bottom side corresponding to the cross section will be corresponding to this dashed line indicated here. Okay. And the reason why I, I show this drawing because in the, in the remaining of the chapters, uh, we're going to only use these cross sections as the illustration to uh, for our selection of the level uh, uh, in which the data edge we're going to calculate. Okay, so here we I, this will be the starting the kind of the first taste how can we uh, use bridge based upon this cross section to uh, expose the information we like okay so now with the everything introduced together and basically uh, this is the this is the whole beam from the front view will be something uh, like this okay so something like this one um, so let me get more precise So basically, the for example here, let me draw here. If this is the beam on the uh, cantilever beam, and right now we pick this section, say section A, section B. So section A would be something like this one right here, okay? So this is a section A A, and this is section B B, okay? And then this portion we pick is only the portion here. We only pick is the top uh, portion of the segment here. Okay, so that means here I pick the bottom sections. This, oops, uh, I pick this side is what I emphasize in the dashed line here. Okay. So I wish you know what exactly we are doing here. Okay, good. So keep this in mind. Then I want to erase those informations for the remaining uh, demonstration here. Okay. So keep the whole pictures what we are doing here. Then I'm going to start with the calculation. And again here, if we have the uh, say this is on the loading so in the similar example uh, the, 
in the similar statement like we did before, we expect in terms of this cross section, we select uh, in terms of this cross section with uh, the free bar diagram we select here, they should have the internal bending. Okay, the bending is I call the M1. So M1 going to have the bending stress, and this is the bending stress. Okay, so bending stress. Let me change the color here. So this is the bending stress and multiply the bending stress and integrate the bending stress over this uh, cross-sectional area that means over this cross-section into the 3D view, okay? Over this section here, okay? So basically corresponding to you is, corresponding to you is this section, okay? So we do this such an integral, uh, the, the we integrate the stress, the bending stress over this area, the, sh the I call the shaded area, okay? Then we can determine the magnitude of the force, okay? And so how to implement that shaded area, basically, the how to implement this integral, basically detailed is this. The first step from our chapter four, we have learned the bending stress is formula like this one. Then we take the small force, small force simply equal to the stress multiplied with the strip, okay? So basically here is dA. So that's the dA. Okay, so that small area is the A here. Okay, so put into here, then we begin to do the integral here. So I introduced those formula into the integral here, so we can implement it. So when we implement it, okay, this is a stress and dA. Okay, and N is a constant in this integral. I is a constant, we take the M and I out. So leaving this term here. So this integral for this examples is to integrate from y1 to y2, okay? So that means here, uh, in terms of our coordinate here, this level is y1 here, this level is y2. We simply integrate over dA, the dA strip is moving from here to top over from y1 to y2. So this spatial area, we actually, we have a very easy we have a very simple formula to replace uh, such an integral. Basically, that is this. Again, let me erase um, necessary information to not to block our focus here. Okay. Such uh, integral in our textbook we define as a Q. Okay. So the calculation of the integral Q, uh, that means here. The Q basically for this example is y1, y2, and yda, okay? For this integral basically is equal to this. That is equal to, this integral equal to this. And let me write it up here. y star bar a star. And what is a star? A star is the shaded area. This shaded portion, this shaded area, this area this shaded area uh, equal to A star, okay? So that's where we calculated. So to calculate the area for this selected, and it shouldn't be hard, okay? Once we have a dimensions number here given. And what is this one? Basically, this one is this, okay? What is this? This one is this. You find the centroid. This is the centroid of the shaded area. Then y star bar, y bar star or y star bar representing is a distance from this centroid of the shaded area to neutral axis. That's it. So basically here to calculate k, sorry, to, to determine to calculate q, you simply work on the shaded area. Okay, so that is a key for here. Good? Okay. So with everything here, let me uh, move on. And before move on, let me erase our necessary information here. And again, not to uh, distract our learning. 
Okay, so again, right now you know how to determine F1. Okay, F1 simply follow the three procedures and basically F equal to uh, this the minus M over I times Q. Okay, and then in the similar way, you can determine F2 here. Okay, so once you determine F1, F2, simply from here you can see data edge equal to F1 minus F2. Good. So now you know how to calculate F1, and in a similar way, you should be able to calculate F2. So that means data H should be no problem. Okay. So once data H have no problem, then you simply divide H by the area. Okay, what is that area? Uh, we can move on to the next slide. Uh, before we see the area here, I want to reinforce you. So for a bending of the beam, so if they say here is kind of the illustration for laminated uh, plate, okay, into a single beam. So if the lam if the beam are laminated so good, which means the bonding, the glue has very good bonding, then they should have no problem. However, if the glue uh, is weak or the uh, shin stress is strong enough to delaminate, then basically the the layers of the bonded uh, plate is going to separate like this one. So this is the evidence uh, showing uh, to people the existence of the shin stress. For this case, you can say the shin stress is strong and strong enough to delaminate the bonding strings, which means the glue, the glue uh, is too weak. Okay. So, so here again, here is a summary uh, of what we have learned. So in particular here, this Q is the shaded area and that is this one here. And here, this A in our textbook simply is the, what I mean, the shaded area. Okay, for this case, is this case here. Okay, so again, how to calculate Q, basically that is A, um, A start times Y bar start. So this area uh, equal to A start the area, and you find the centroid of the shaded area, and then you measure from there to the uh, neutral axis, and that is the Y bar start. So that is the way you determine the Q here, okay? So when you determine the Q, and what is the V? The V is the transverse loading, okay? V is the transverse loading and in the cross section here. So that is the way we started uh, in here rotated from our chapter five, V is the transverse loading. So this V can be extracted from the shear diagram. And what is I? I is the moment of inertia respect to the neutral axis, and this I is the same as we learned in chapter four, okay? And what is T? T basically is the thickness, uh, sorry, the width of the, the segment here, okay? So that is the, the what we exercise here. So this is the T here, okay? So with this one, basically this is showing again, that is what we seen before. And what we did is this. Uh, here we calculated the H equal to VQ over I delta X. Okay, delta H is the, the, the shear force existing in, uh, in this uh, pink area. Okay, and in this formula, um, in terms of cross section, this is a T here, okay. And I is the, say, if this is the neutral axis, okay, so if the bending is bending like this one, so this is our neutral axis, then here the I is a moment of inertia of the entire cross section regarding the neutral axis here, okay. Uh, so here let us, uh, so uh, again, the shear flow is the, um, the shear force per unit area for uh, per unit uh, length. So that is VQ over I. So here we can take a look at a quick example to demonstrate. So basically here you see uh, the the this I I beam struck. Basically let me put into three dimensional. Um, 
maybe use the different color it will be easier okay let me put into three dimensional case and it will be easier to for us to see okay so that is a three dimensional case here so basically here they have uh, we use three plates of the wood to make a uh, ivy maybe uh, some people are going to use this one to build a deck okay so the nail so knowing the nail the space between the nail is 25 millimeters in the vertical um, the basically here that means here my second nail is going to place here okay and the distance from each nail to here that is 25 millimeter that is the meaning of this case okay so it want to know the uh, shear force uh, in each nail okay so what this mean uh, this problem also provide the shear force so the shear force is 500 newton for example the shear force in the cross section is uh, 500 newton something like this one here okay so basically you could imagine is this for example if this i beam is something like this and then for example say oops <coughs> so um for example if this is the p here okay so we can draw the shear diagram so this is x this is v and the shear diagram will be something like this the direction here is p so the shear diagram is like this okay so this is p so uh, in any cross sections the shear force is p equal to constant so that is a p here p equal to 500 newtons so that is the one here in any cross section we express the the shear force is 500 newtons so that's the meaning of this statement here okay so now we want to see is the shear the the uh, the the shear force in each nail so again from our formula in our previous slides here uh, shear flow the total shear force existing delta h in the segment let me call the segment is length delta x the total shear force and uh, equal to the shear flow multiply with x again this is the shear force per unit length uh, unit lines multiply a length so that give us the total shear force the shear force okay so with this one in mind for this case basically this 25 millimeter is the row of delta x okay so we want to determine the total shear force simply equal to q times delta x here and delta x for this case is a spacing of the nail 25 millimeters here so very apparently we simply need to calculate q once q determine we can determine h okay so how to determine q so that is a good exercise so determine q we can see here so q is a shear flow in which level in this level in the pink level Com in terms of the description in the cross section the pink level intersect with the cross section with aa here so basically you can say this shear flow is a shear flow along the segment that passing through aa here and in this case it's out of the paper okay so basically in terms of figure here that is a shear flow at this level here okay the shear flow at its level so now we want to determine the shear flow the shear force in the nail because you can see the nail uh, linking the nail bounding the two plates through here so from here you can see this is the way I highlight here that is the sections corresponding to what we done here okay so that indicating in this case I'm going to draw this is the shaded area we're going to use to calculate Q Q equal to VQ over I and here the V is given 500 newtons and Q Q if you remember A star times Y star bar and those one are calculated based upon 
the shaded area so here I let me highlight again how do we pick the shaded area I pick the shaded area is above the section I'm interested here I first identify this is the sections I'm let me use a different color this is a section I'm interested in, is where the bounding of the two plates through the nails so all the shear force will go to the nail through this section here okay and once I identify this section where I'm going to calculate shear force then the shaded area I pick is above again why above you pick up this one that is where we starting from the beginning and that reasoning once we have this section above that is the shaded area okay above the selected line that is our shaded area okay so this is our shaded area uh, the, the the purple here okay so this is the shaded area you can see the shaded area is above the line we pick okay so hopefully no question here so how to determine the a start the a star simply is the area of this plate okay and what is the y bar and then what is y bar start so the centroid of the shaded area is here and the neutral surface uh, neutral area uh, neutral axis is through the middle so this is our y bar start here okay so with the numbers we should be able to detail this one and i is a moment of inertia of the entire cross sections about the neutral axis again this one is uh, we as we did in chapter four there okay so here is a uh, information so this is a detailed again we look at here the q bar is the uh for this one this is the area of this shaded area okay and this one is the distance from the centroid to here that is the distance here okay we should have no problem I again that is a moment of inertia of the entire cross sections respect to the neutral axis again this is from our chapter 4 there so you should go to the chapter 4 if you don't uh, you cannot figure out why is this but basically go to the chapter 4 so once we have everything here we calculate Q okay so q multiply with data x 25 q multiply with data x then that is the force here good okay <clears throat> and then we uh, want to uh, calculate the shear stress okay and we know the shear stress is simply uh, equal to q divided by t if you remember this is vq over i okay so simply what we calculate divided by t and again what is t if you remember what is t t is the width of the segment we pick here okay so that is a t so keep that in mind then here where is t are you able to tell from this figure basically t is here right and how much 20 good so basically tau equal to this one you can should be able to calculate okay so that's the t here the every other three terms are the same as they would be uh, previously calculated um, before we uh, end these uh, sections here I want to make a few notes and then before we close it up uh, by up to this point you should know you should know okay what is the shaded area of representing for here okay so basically here if you say if I want you I interested in knowing the uh, shin stress or shin force along this section okay so basically that is the shaded area you pick okay oops I have not prepared so let me uh, erase my drawing here so basically here if you are interested in finding in determining the shear the shear stress shear the shear force or shear flow along this uh, section along this level here so basically in terms of the intersection with the cross section that's along here so you first pick where you are interested in determining the shear force shear stress or shear flow 
then the shaded area simply is the area above the selected level in the cross section like we uh, pink uh, the purple showing here okay and then how to identify the neutral axis neutral axis is this you find the centroid of the entire cross section okay you find the centroid of the entire cross sections and then if this is the uh, shift transverse loading okay if this is applied transverse loading this is from the shear diagram okay then the neutral axis should be the axis passing through the centroid and normal to normal to the shear force the the transverse uh, transverse force here okay so that's the way you determine the neutral axis and how what does the calculated shin stress mean? The shin stress simply means is the uh, say if we calculate the data H, that's the shear force here. If this area is uh, A, so the, we calculate the tau VQ over IT is simply represented is data H divided by this area A, simply meaning the average stress along this level here. Okay. So how to identify the direction of the string stress and the string stress for this example here. If our transverse loading V is this, then our calculated along this level should be like this, okay? And this is in one direction and then at the bottom one that should be flowing in that direction. The way is this, in chapter one you should recall if we have the shin force, the shin stress on one side is this then the other two sides will be the other side should be like this and the other side should be like this and this is the contents from our chapter one here so so if you pick this element uh, something like this one then you can quickly figure out if we have a shin stress that one along with the transverse loading then at the bottom side at the, the pink side it must be like this one okay so that is a way we identify the direction of the shin stress the second note is this uh, here we consider this is the beam with box shape so here I call the box beam okay for the box beam and you can have the selection of the uh, area for understanding the distribution of the shin stress, uh, shin force, or shear flow. For example, you pick up this level and you cut it in three dimensional. Actually, you cut it is uh, upper corner, upper right corner here. So from here, you can see exposed is two strip, and here I showing is in pink. Here you have two strip. Let me call the area 1 and let me call the area A2 here. So again, from our calculated area, from our calculated uh, procedure, you should be able to determine data edge, okay? Simply data edge, for example, say from here to here, let me call this a data x here. So data edge is VQ over I times data x here, okay? So from this case, what we've been calculated, basically tau simply equal to data H and area one plus area two. Okay, so basically the average shin stress we've been calculated is the average of this force divided by the total, total area we've been exposed. So for this case, you you pick the upper right corner and in the way you expose two strip and that is the internal area you expose. So this is the total area of the internal area you expose to, okay? So in here, although we know how to determine the VQ over IT, but this one is again representing is this and actually representing is the average stress over the total area you expose here. So this is an important concept. And what is what matters about this one? I'm going to talk about this one more in um, maybe in the third or fourth section there. Okay, I will come up come back here about this issue. Mm -hmm. So the direction of the shear is stress, and let me get one more time here. So this is the uh, transverse loading that is obtained from the uh, 
the shear diagrams. Okay. So for example, here let me um, here let me I can do this one in in, in in more detail here. So consider we have the cantilever beam. Okay. So here is a. Um, So say here is the loading P here. So we can draw the shear diagram and bend the moment diagram here, V zero X. Okay, so shear diagram will be good enough. So let me draw. So here is a reaction P here. Okay. So the shear diagram should be something like this. Pretty much constant. Yes, actually it's constant here. V equal to P. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about how to place the transverse loading. So let me pick a section here. Okay, so on this section, and I have a two choices of choosing the free bar diagram. The first one is I pick the left hand part. Okay, so this is a section I expose. Okay, so here uh, you can see and that one corresponding to this place, the V equal to P, V equal to positive P. Okay, that is the one we draw. So per our sign conventions, if you remember, uh, this is our sign convention here, right? So sign convention for B, and that is our chapter five, okay? So for sign conventions, right now you can see this is the section exposed and facing right, okay? So here we've been calculated transverse loading, B equal to positive P. So per sign conventions, that must be like this. So here V, the magnitude equal to P. Okay, so for this case, this section I expose is something like this. So something like this one here. Okay, so that is the one I expose. And this one, for example, for this case, this is the cantilevered here. So this section is exposed like this one here. Okay, so let me draw in 3D. Okay, so that one, uh, this one is something like this. And the other options is you might uh, choose the right portion. So the right portion is something like this one here. Okay, so that is the section, the same section we expose. Okay, so this is the cross section facing left. And facing left with positive shear as we determined from the shear diagram. So that shear force must be upward per sign convention here. So that would be the magnitude equal to P. Okay. So very apparently uh, for this option here, I pick for this demonstration here, I draw the V down is I pick this one. Good. So hopefully this one you should completely understood. You should completely understand what I'm talking here. Okay. So now with this everything here, then direction of the shear stress is this. The whatever the transverse loading is, the direction is the shear stress must be in the same direction of the V. Basically, the shear, the transverse force is the mother, is the base on which the shear stress is induced to. So the shear stress uh, in that cross section must be in the same direction of the V. Okay, so from here we determine the direction of the string stress. So let me translate here. So the string stress basically is uh, here. Okay, that basically point downward on the cross section. So again, let me pick a small element here. Okay, and let me enlarge that segment here. Okay, and in that segment and this side is here okay on that side i would be calculated the shear stress like this so again from chapter one then you should you should right away to draw the shear stress on the other three sides should be like this okay then let me copy this one to here so that is the one oops that is the one here okay so in the pink then you should right away to determine the direction of the string stress should be like this. So overall, for this case, the summations of the string stress over the whole area, which means taking the integral, this is the direction of the data edge is. Okay. 
Then um, here we come to the second note, uh, how to select the shaded area for determining for calculating Q here. So for example, if we are interested in knowing what is the shin uh, force, shin stress or shear flow in this segment, in this segment, in this at this level. So I simply pick this as the level here, okay, and here again this is our T for the width. Then shaded area I set is the area above the selected uh, level and that is our shaded area. So something like this one. Okay, so here corresponding in terms of the cross section, this is the shaded area. Okay. Again, uh, most of the time uh, we won't we won't uh, draw the three dimensional schematics uh, diagram for users for uh, students. So most of the time, the only two dimensional, which means this diagram, okay, these two dimensional will be sufficient. Okay, but for the beginners, here I emphasize again and again in three-dimensional, but you need to gradually shift your focus from three-dimensional diagram to here. So in two-dimensional here, we're interested is in this segment, corresponding is we're interested is in this area here. We want to know the data edge. We want to know tau. We want to know q. Okay, so that means here, at this level, we want to know um, the data edge. We want to know tau, we want to know q. Okay, at this level, this level is this area. Okay, so keep that in mind. So that is a way we pick the q. Okay, so that is the here the vq and tau being calculated. So on the other side, and I want to tell you uh, the selection of the Q, the shaded area for Q is not unique. Actually, there's a two options. The which option? This is the option we've been talking about. So this is the level in which I'm interested in knowing, want to find the tau, want to find the Q, want to find the data edge, etc. Okay, so that's a level and I told you pick the shaded area above that level and that is the one we've been exercised and that is shaded area. On the other side, the other option uh, here I want to tell you is this. Again, here this is the level, the same level as we've been used here. But we can also choose the shaded area below, below. Okay, so that is the shaded area here. So here you have option one. Option one is you choose the shaded area above the segment, above the line that we pick. The option two, you can pick below. Okay, depends on which selection, which option will give you a quicker time in completing the needed calculation. Okay, so let me repeat again the either option will give us the same result and the good option i would say better option is to uh, we can use less amount of the time in completing the needed calculation okay so so here we have two options here okay so here the um, for this case uh, let me further um, the detail the the in terms of quantity here. So for this case, you can see the for option one, if we choose the shaded area like this, then you can see the Y1 bar, that centroid of the area one to here is positive. So this per our calculation is positive. <coughs> right now for this, if we choose option two, then the shaded, the, this is the, the centroid of the shaded area that just below here. So in terms of calculation, this is negative, okay? And so what is the difference between the positive and negative? And actually, uh, it's, don't, uh, it's okay, it's not matter too much. Okay, it's not matter too much. And, and actually, in terms of the magnitude, Q 
equal to Q2. In terms of the magnitude, Q1 equal to Q2, but they simply have the opposite sign. And what is the reason uh, to uh, to cause this such an interesting an interesting uh, property? The way is this. Uh, here it can be explained by this. If you would pick, let me use the color again. If you pick this as the free bar diagram to analyze, and that is a way like this here. So under this case, this is the area. This is the area we're interested in determining the shear information. The H is like this. On the other side, if you pick this free bar diagram, okay. So relative to this one, that free bar diagram is this portion here. So basically, it exposed is the same area on which we interested in knowing tau, q, and delta h, but simply they are action reaction. So that means because here we simply pick it up is the complementary, uh, the the free bar diagrams uh, sharing the same uh, the area of the cross section. We're interested in in knowing this one. So basically, the shear force we expose simply is the action and reaction concept. So they must have the same magnitude and opposite directions. So that is the reason why we have these conclusions. They corresponding Q must be. Um, the, uh, the the same amount in opposite direction. Here uh, in this slide, I try to show this concept in more detail. Hopefully that can help you here. So again, here we have two options, either this option, and again, this is a level we're interested in knowing and determining the tau, q, and delta h here. So here you have one, the two options. The one option is to pick the shaded area above the mine, okay? And then that basically constitutes like this. The second one, you have the, the second option to pick the lower one, okay, to calculate Q2. So the Q2 basically is like this, okay? So the two things put together is basically uh, if you, uh, in terms of the geometry, the two things put together basically equivalent to original uh, cross section, okay, uh, for sure. So that means the Q1 plus Q2 must be equal to Q3. Q3 basically is corresponding to the original entire cross section. And what is Q3? In terms of our concept, the Q3 equal to the, the area of the shaded the shaded area right now for this case because they combine together is the whole area and multiply with the y star bar. What is y star bar? Y star bar our concept is from the centroid of the shaded area to send to the neutral axis for entire cross section actually this term equal to zero. Okay? This term equal to zero. So that means Q3 equal to zero. So that means Q1 plus Q2 equal to zero. So from here you can see Q1 must be equal to minus Q2, the same magnitude but opposite direction here. Okay, so that one is the the way um, uh, they give you the options. So again, uh, you have two options, either choose the shaded area above or below this, uh, the level uh, at which we interested in knowing the Q, tau, and data edge. Okay, so from here you can see that pretty much important is users or students you must first know where you are interested in determining the shin stress. Where? That is your choice. And most of the time, we interested in determining the, the place where the maximum shin stress occurs. Okay, that is for design purposes, most of the time, we interested in knowing the, the place where the maximum shin stress occurs. So um, that situation, you can such a way to determine the level you're interested. So once you determine the level at which you're interested, and then the remaining should be very straightforward. Pick the shaded area on the pick it uh, pick it up the shaded area um, but uh, above or below, and then you simply proceed the calculations. Okay.